Welcome to another episode of Showcase on Sevens TV. It's lovely to have great talents and skills. While showcasing several local talents, I realized that challenges form an integral part of Pathway to Success. Facing and overcoming them is a real art indeed. In this episode, we're going to look into some of these challenges. We're going to meet the highly talented and creative sibling, Archana Ravi and Abhishek Ravi. Archana and Abhishek, it's not an easy journey, especially when you're balancing a lot of things and putting your heart and soul, your body, mind and soul, I should say, into the <laughs> talent that you have. I'm sure there would have been a lot of challenges. I think my main challenge as a kid was just being very different to other kids. Um, and now I look at it as like a superpower, but when I was younger, I thought it was such a like, such a curse in a way because I'd always get bullied by all the other guys who'd be like, why are you wearing makeup and dancing? Whereas I thought I looked pretty good with makeup on. But um, it, it's, it's a very divine art and to pursue it, you have to be open to wearing makeup and wearing such a grand costume. And Bharatanatyam is so different to every other dance style and that's why I got bullied by so many other boys who thought it was a very weird thing. And I don't think it's the fact that they wanted to bully me. It was just something that's so different and so new to them. And I think it's not that common for mm, young boys to get it's into not conventional. Yeah. Definitely not. Not in New Zealand as well. Yeah. I do know a few male dancers who have reached great heights mm. today. They're one of the top celebrities. But there were times that people used to mistake them to have very feminine yeah. instincts, you Definitely. know, because Bharatanatyam is you need to have that grace. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what were your challenges? Oh, mine were quite a few, if I'm, if I'm completely honest. So like I said, I was never someone that really gravitated towards Carnatic music or classical arts. And because of that, I don't think I ever put my 100% when I was growing up. In fact, I was quite scared of, of performing in front of people or performing in front of on stage or anything. And I had severe social anxiety. Mm. So I would just start shaking if I had to like if someone I so, you weren't even born then <laughs> no I'm kidding he does he does I remember coming to him and being like I don't want to do this I can't and there'd be like terribly dark moments you know I'd kind of go into without even realizing um it was quite a toxic relationship that I had with music and it was not just because I lacked a lot of self-confidence but it was also because I think we live in a society where people are very quick to judge and very you're quite conscious, you get conscious about it. Yeah, you about get very it conscious. And they're also not, they're very comfortable in sharing their opinion, which sometimes can be good, sometimes cannot be good. I think so, critis the two words that I remember is criticism and critique. Like a, someone, with a, someone with good intentions for you, for you to grow will critique you. Yeah. Someone who just, does, just wants to bring you down will criticize and you. And I think the art is how you learn to cope exactly. up with this. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And so I had a lot of I had a lot of that that came my way it, from people that I considered very very close. You know, they'd be like, "You don't sound that great. You don't. You're not good enough." And so all of that really subconsciously stayed with it me. It goes with you. It just oh, resonated. Yeah. And so that I saw having like a domino effect into everything, because of my low self esteem in music. I had like just low self esteem in anything uh, generally. Like whether it came to studies, whether it came to making friends or Put going you down. Yeah. yeah, like you just you really lose your sense of self worth. But I think over the last couple of years, I've really so tried how, to come back. So what made you come out of it? I I'm still coming out of it, but I think I'm at a lot better place than I am now than I was before. Yeah. So honestly, I think I completely owe it to to like Vedanta and spirituality. I yeah. think we. Uh, as elders, we need to understand what the youngsters are going through <laughs> and uh, try to encourage and give a lot of motivation because it does have a very great impact in the minds and it, it takes a lot of time for you to yeah, come definitely. out of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure the more people watching the show are going to understand the kind of feelings definitely. that I think not, it's not just the age but every person at some point in time. Yes. Feels, because it's very easy to say or criticize a person. Yeah. yeah, don't let other people stop you from doing what you love. Number one lesson. Yeah. You have to, you're only going to have yourself. Wisdom doesn't come with age. <laughs> Wisdom does come with experience. Yes. Definitely. You know, it's, it's like you, Definitely. you live it through. 100%. Definitely. <laughs> I'm 
We're just going to listen to uh, some of Archana's music now. <laughs> Give us a little demo. <laughs> <laughs> That was absolutely amazing. We are having a multifaceted, talented, interesting, inspiring young lady. From hip hop to rap, from emceeing to publishing, she's indeed a queen in performing arts. Let's welcome Queen Shirley. I see you as a very strong woman who has set your own trend in creating your life the way uh, it's turned out to be. So um, could you just share a few challenges that's been in your journey? Okay, so one of the biggest challenges was having this passion and desire to do music and then becoming a mum. So when I became a mum, I thought my career was over. You know, I seen a lot of mums and a lot of them change. You know, they, especially in the music scene, especially hip hop, because back then there weren't many mothers or many women coming out and really expressing themselves through emceeing, um, through this element of hip hop. And I wanted to be someone in South Auckland that would inspire other young mothers or other people, especially female, um, to come out, come out and, you know, and connect with us and also express, tell your story. And so that was one of the biggest challenges was becoming a mum. And I felt that it was, it kind of like made me, it put me in a position where I thought, oh, is it over? You know, do I have to go, you know, am I going to be able to live my dreams? But I think I wanted to break that stereotype. I wanted to break those down and, and say, no, you know what? Anything is possible. Being an MC is very challenging, you know. True. You have to be active. you got to be out, you know. There was a time where um, it got so popular in the club scene that we were all flowing that way. So I started to hit the clubs and, and I realised this is where it's at. This is where <laughs> everybody's at. This is where I'm going to make my money because, you know, yeah. there isn't really much money. Um, and hip -hop. At the end of the day, you need that. Yeah, well, you know, I've got to eat somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, and so I ended up doing gigs in the clubs and I found that was quite, that was fun, really fun. Met a lot of people and I think for me the whole journey was really what I learned is it's not just about, it's not about being famous or trying to make money. It was really about connecting with people and that's what I loved about music. When I became a mother, the whole, you know, I... I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to see what was it so hard? Why is it so hard for mums to still yeah. be able to write a song and be able to put it out there as an artist? And I didn't understand because for me, I was very driven. I don't know where I got this drive from, but you know, there was a lot of amazing people in my life that, you know, I was passed on to different families. You know, I didn't, okay. I wasn't raised by okay. the same people. So every person that I connected with, I picked something up from them. I think being a mother taught me how to be a, a great multitasker as well. That's, so that's wonderful. A <laughs> that's a good learning tool. And I was very good. And I loved it. I loved being a mum, but I also, so my whole dreams, the whole career changed. 
you know, instead of wanting to go touring around the world, you know, I had people in Australia hit me up, come here and do a show here, come here and do a show. I had people in California, they wanted me to go and do a, do a show there. So many people were like, they found me, um, you know, because back then we didn't have social media like the way the way it's been now. It is now. now, yeah. So I really connected with people through the shows that I was doing and I didn't really care about followers. It's, it's uh, uh, very true indeed that her story is highly inspirational because I think when you actually went through a lot in your life, yeah. you didn't pull back. That's it. I mean, I've been through abuse. I've been through domestic violence. I've been through two divorces. I mean, that's a book or a movie. We might be working on that on one day. But, you know, I'm just, just, just to look back and go, wow, I don't even know how I've done it. But I feel like everything, something I haven't mentioned is God. Absolutely. God has been my foundation from the get-go. If you have to give a few words to the community mm. to say how one has to make up their mind to move forward to achieve their passion, what would that be? I would encourage, if you're a young person, stay in school. Go and get your education because education is liberty. It is power. It can work wonders in your life. You know, for me, I didn't finish school. So I'm thankful now I have a diploma in education. And that was because I really had a desire to work with people, to educate others, um, just like myself, who weren't in school. You know, I wanted to inspire other young people in South Auckland, especially in South Auckland, that, you know, if even if you've come from a broken home, you didn't have much at home growing up, you know, you have every, you know, there is hope. There is hope. You know, we've got a brain. We, you know, if we're functioning okay, there is hope. And you know what? Today, there's so many resources out there now. There's a lot of help Absolutely, out there. yes. I would say just hold on to your dream. Don't give up on your dreams. And just connect with people on the same journey as you. If you feel like you're in the wrong crowd, you know, find some new, new people to hang with. There's always someone out there that is willing to be your friend. You know, you can never run out of friends in this world. <laughs> Soldier, I'm a fight till my work is done. That's why I need God's light. And at times like these, I need that positive energy. On this lockdown, couple weeks got me thick and deep. Now this COVID-19 affected my family. I'm missing my seeds and all the happy gathering. All my home girls meeting with my team and won't be long. Just hang on to that dream, uh. Cause all my life I've been struggling. But I believe everything will be G double O D. Hey, hey. <laughs> I think her journey has been highly inspiring and uh, let's wish her all the very best for sharing all the stories. So this was a real eye-opener to us, wasn't it? So see you with more such episodes on 7's TV. Until then, this is Shobha.